Good evening. Um, I welcome you to the meeting of the Deerfield Planning Board, and I will read our rather lengthy uh, introduction that we all perhaps should know by heart by now. The meeting is being held in hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation oh, provision. There's not a lot of hearing going on here. That's the hardest. Can you, you want to, are these live? No, but this is for Wednesday. Well, this is cool. I can hear you perfectly well. But the audience, but the audience can. The audience can. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Is this any better audience? Can you hear us better with this? No. No, that's no they're not on it. Any... Right. Oh, jeez. So, yep. recommendations? Oh, yeah. I say everyone scoot up. Uh, I don't know what else to do. But that's <laughs> not been a problem in the past, has it? Yes, it has always been a problem. Yeah, it has it's always been. High feeling. Yeah, terrible sound. It was meant for to absorb small children sleeping at lunch, and playing indoors. We just have to talk louder. Okay. <laughs> so if I speak at this volume, and I remember to speak at this. Okay. Volume. Okay. Thank you. Although this part's very boring, because it's just about what the governor tells us we can and can't do, and you know we only listen with one ear. I'm going to report. Now you've cut off all the sound. Annalee, we can't hear you at all. Um, about now. Can you hear better, James, now, too? Okay, excellent. Okay, so now we're trying to figure out how to unmute Anne Mary so that she can address the minutes. Hi there, I move that we... Hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah, uh, but we still don't hear you, Anne Mary. All right. I move that we um, accept the minutes from uh, August 23rd and August 28th. Well, um, but we need to be able to hear and marry at some point. So, Jen, if you could work on that. Um, 
So we will move the minutes to either another part of the agenda or to yes. Wait, we can't hear it anyway. Nope. Will we be able to hear anyone who is on your Zoom? We're trying. There's something else with that. I think what we will do is maybe take a little bit of a break right now so that uh, we can figure out these technical difficulties because clearly on a night with public hearing, we need to hear out with the audience. Yeah. She's trying to figure it out. Then the audience can hear the town hall, but it was getting Aunt Mary to put the talk. And even though she unmuted herself, no one can hear her. So that might be a speaker that cannot hear. Where's Aunt Mary now? Yeah, I just put it up. Carolyn, can you say something? Because this was down. No, it needs to be at 10. It needs to be at 10. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, they can hear us by now. All right. Can you hear me? Bob, can you unmute yourself? Can I can hear something? now. I can hear now. Can you hear me? Can't hear me. They can all hear. <laughs> the host has to unmute us. Right. All right now. Uh, testing. No. Can you hear me? Anything?
Can any of the board hear us yet? Jen, can you hear anybody yet? Bob, I can hear you, but I can't hear any of the board members. Yeah, we can hear fine on the Zoom, but no, no town hall. No, I can't hear a thing. No. I just wondered if we should just go down there. <laughs> I don't know. We should just call a Zoom meeting so we can hear each other. Uh, yeah. I don't understand what's going on. I don't this is my... not this is not at all productive. No, I don't have my phone, so I can't call Jen. Well, I have my phone, but I just can't talk to Jen to tell her that they we can't hear them. I heard them say they were gonna take a break to try to fix I already the I already called Jen to tell her that we couldn't hear still. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize there was, we can go down there in person and sit there. Yeah, it's a hybrid meeting. Huh? It's a hybrid meeting. Right, so, Maybe, I think I might just drive down. I would like to hear, I would like to hear that too. Yeah, there it goes. Can you hear us, Carolyn? Yeah. We're starting to be able to hear you. You can hear us. Maybe if you turn up your so audio on your computers. Turn, turn up your audio on your computers at home. I'm all the way up. Gonna be here till midnight. <laughs> Jen, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It doesn't sound like it's coming through the speaker system. You know, on the table. Yeah, it's not coming through the speaker system. That's the problem. And you, and you tried star six? Yeah, I did star six. Or hang up and tile the number again?
You are in the meeting now. There are more than 40 participants in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. You are muted. You can mute or unmute yourself by pressing the hold button. All right. <laughs> Uh, What's that? Trevor, can you speak? Yes, uh, we can hear you, but you sound like you're underwater. I just, I think before we had the mics right over the speakers, and that's how it worked very well. But I know you don't have the mics on right now, so. They're on. Should we move over? Can you hear us now? Goose next, but used to hang over the speaker system. And that seemed to work pretty well. I don't know. Do I do a star six or is it already set up? We can hear you pretty good right now. Can you hear me? Who do you hear? Yep. Who do you hear? Are you, are you me good? really good? Are you in the building? Um, I'm like hovering right over it. Yeah, we can hear you fine. I, can you hear us? Yep. Over here at this. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. I wonder how that was fixed, other than magic. Thank you very much. Wow. All right, so. Oh, we still need to speak loudly. The room. Okay, so um, minutes, Rachel. Uh, me? And Mary, and Mary, sorry, and Mary. Put it in my hand. Hey. I move that we accept the minutes from August 2nd. I second that. Uh, all in favor? Um, Denise Mason, yes. Rich Blaine, yes. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Andrew Leeson, yes. Uh, Emery Cooley, yes. Emery Cooley, yes. Emily Wolf Cool, yes. So the minutes from the second are approved. Is it the second or the second? 23rd? The second. The oh. second. Oh. All of us didn't, unfortunately, see the 23rd in time. Okay. So, all businesses, we're moving on now to our public hearings. Um, <clears throat> Not to belabor the fact, but the way the the process that we will have for all of the public, I will introduce the measure. We will have public comments, and then the originator of the measure, either being the planning board or the select board, will conclude the public comments prior to closing the public hearing and deliberations and voting by the planning board. Um, our guidelines for our public comments are that we are asking for people to speak one at a time um, and one comment per person. I will recognize speakers and I will try to uh, alternate between people in person and people on Zoom. Um, again, respectful, non-repetitive and brief. Um, we are ha asking for a two minute limit. Um, I've asked Vice Prayer Chair Denise Mason to be our time keeper. Uh, we certainly aren't having a hole in the floor for you to drop through if you're over your two minutes, but please, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. she might have it, or the hook. Uh, she will give approximate 15 second warning and please try to be respectful of that because as was mentioned, we've got 40 people on Zoom and a good handful here, so we, we, um, we really want everyone to feel like they are heard. Um, and also the board will be listening um, we are not responding to individual comments or to individual questions. 
Um, when the comments are done or seem to be repetitive, I'll be asking the board if they're ready to um, close the public hearing, at which point we would vote to close the public hearing. Um, and when it is closed, then we have our deliberations and we then would entertain a motion on the issue. Um, with a reminder that the motions that we will be approving tonight mean that they will be going to the warrant and to town meeting. We're not approving the bylaws per se. So um, please tell your family, friends, uh, anyone you can to uh, residents of Deerfield, obviously, to come to our, our town meeting um, October 4th, 7 p.m. at Frontier Regional High School. Um, really important to have as many people as possible. Um, and when, when we as a board um, vote on the, um, on the amendments, we will either vote to send them forward unchanged or changed and different dominoes fall according to that. So with that said, I will uh, open the planning, uh, the public hearing for the <clears throat> Table uh, for the dimensional requirements um, for municipal frontage, um, and uh, bear with me as I read the um, read the article. And um, people in attendance, you can hear okay now. Also, thank you. Better. Thank you. So, you of right. If you don't hear it on the first round, you can hear it on the second round. <laughs> this one's slightly yeah. different. <laughs> <laughs> So, the Deerfield Planning Board is holding a public hearing pursuant to General, General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 5, on September 13, 2021, on a potential amendment to the Deerfield Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 179, Article 2, entitled Use and Dimensional Requirements, Section 2300, entitled Dimensional Requirements, Subsection 2320, entitled Table of Dimensional Requirements, by reducing the minimum frontage requirement for town-owned lots used for municipal facilities in the CRVD and C1 districts. I will have a moment in a minute to elaborate a bit on that. Full text of the proposed articles are in the foyer here and also um, on the website. And as we know, the, this meeting is being held in a hybrid fashion with information on the Zoom link um, on our town website. So with that said, the um, public hearing is now open for the municipal frontage um, bylaw amendment. Um, I will start with an introduction that um, really only became obvious today, so please bear with us with this that um, we discovered that due to an error in the posting, the desired districts were not actually included in the text. Um, the districts should be CVRD, C1, and industrial, and the text omitted industrial. And as an aside, industrial is the district that includes the proposed park, which I know many people are um, quite interested in addressing as far as this uh, bylaw is concerned. Um, the posting has been corrected. Um, the planning board already had scheduled another meeting on September 30th um, to address other issues that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, we could, we've been informed that we could actually open the public hearing tonight and then immediately move to continue the public hearing and not have any public comments tonight. We've decided not to do that. The planning board is working very hard to encourage public engagement and as we see by the number of people who are attending both in person and online, um, we're very pleased to have public engagement like this. So um, we will take comments tonight. I will again ask everyone to be very respectful of the two minute limit, of trying not to be repetitive. Certainly since we will be continuing this hearing for September 30th, 
there will be more opportunity for hopefully different comments then. Um, again, we apologize for this problem, but we are thankful to have your um, your involvement and um, it appears that there's a question. This, if this is a question rather than a comment, because um, I still would like to introduce the article a little bit more. Linda's iPad. Linda, is this a question or is this a comment? Comment, and it can wait. Thank you, Linda. Um, so, as many of you remember. A similar article was presented in June at the annual town meeting, um, but at that point, the municipal frontage request was proposed to be townwide. Um, this article is for the 50-foot frontage reduction um, for municipal properties within what will now be the three districts, CVRD, C1, and industrial districts. Um, among rationales that will be discussed, I think, tonight in the comments um, is the uh, statement that it gives the town more flexibility to act quickly to encourage economic growth. And it's fairly common in many other cities and towns, and it also is seen as safe access, um, not endangering the public in any way. So with that said, um, maybe we'll go back to Linda as the first Zoom comment, and then we'll have um, a comment from the audience here. So Linda? It seems that there are already provisions in place for this process. If there is a piece of land that requires a appeal, they should go through that process town meeting strongly opposed this change and we should respect that and each and every piece of property for its specific use should go through the process of the zoning board of appeals it should not be a blanket change we strongly voted that down at town meeting and we should adhere to that thank you thank you linda um do we have someone in town hall? Lily? Can you hear me if I speak like this? Can you hear me? Can you hear Lily? Yes or no? No. Tim says no. I think you have to no. by the mic. Go mirror. closer to the mic, please. Approach the mic. Uh, hi, Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road. Um, I just wanted to say that a couple of things, uh, many of you know, I'm a strong advocate for senior housing, and our goal is to create senior housing in the heart of our community, the village. And this would be enormously helpful. But as a larger philosophical point, to speak to sort of what Linda was saying, I would say that this encourages infill development so that much as we welcome our Snowberry Court neighbors, that was a beautiful field. And so this will work to develop more infill development, which is much more environmentally friendly. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Um, Zoom? Zoom folks with a hand? Uh, Mr. Mr. McLaughlin? Mr. McLaughlin? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, first off, I, I really want to object to uh, putting in the industrial zone at the last minute. Um, everybody knows that this was all about the industrial zone. Uh, I think that the stuff downtown was just an add-on. This was really about that property. And if you didn't put it on, if you didn't notice it, it has, if it hasn't had two notices in the newspaper before this hearing, um, you shouldn't be dealing with this at this upcoming meeting. You do it at the regular town meeting or something like that, but you're not gonna be following the proper procedures uh, to 
being in the industrial zone at this point. Um, uh, that being that being said, um, the, the the issue pertaining to the fact that people strongly voted this down in June, and um, it's being brought up again, you really have to consider. There's a, there's a provision of 40A section five that says if you bring up if you've lost a town meeting, you should wait two years before you bring something up again. And I know that the it wasn't identical, but but the point of it, the do or die point, was the frontage, and the people voted it down. I mean. This planning board should say, they don't have to say no forever, but they should say no for this town meeting, or they should say no for two years. Uh, or I think you should say no forever. Okay, I mean, because think of it this way. I mean, the front edge is there to protect neighbors. And it doesn't really matter to the neighbors who are horribly affected by hundreds of cars and buses coming in between two residential homes, whether those cars and buses are going to um, a facility that's run by the town or a factory that's run by a big corporation. It's still going to hurt the neighbors. Frontage is there for a purpose. And to just blank it right off uh, makes no sense. It's unfair, it's inequitable to your citizens that live near public properties. It's just not. Um, so um, the other thing is, I, I've heard people say, well, there's, don't worry about it. There's site plan review. As the planning board knows, the site plan review doesn't really have the opinion to say no. It's not a special permit. It's a site plan. Uh -huh. So, excuse yes. me, John. Yes. I think um, Annalise trying to uh, talk she, to you. I got it. Muted. Okay. Can you hear me, Annalise? We can hear you. She couldn't hear her. Okay. I still okay, thank you. Um, is there someone in the audience now, um, Jen? Can I still talk? Um, I think your time was up. You had the two minutes. We have the two minutes. Thank Limit, you. Uh, okay. My problem was that I wasn't. Okay, audience. Hi, we're still uh, Jennifer Remillard, Conway Street. Um, I'm actually in strong support of changing this to the three areas that you've spoken about in town. Um, I know that there's plans in progress to modify the Leary lot to enable access which would encourage uh, parking downtown, which would bring business to the community. And I know a lot of small business owners within the center of town are strong proponents of having more parking. So by enacting this new um, frontage, um, it, it's my understanding that that would be a really strong suit um, to, to incorporate that area. It also would enhance the large number of parcels within the community in these three zones that the town owns that are off the tax rolls. There's nothing being done with those properties. They are for the benefit and the use of the residents in the community. So by the planning board voting for this to be on the special town meeting warrant and agenda, um, I feel that that would be really a strong um, benefit for the community. We would hopefully be able to utilize the potential of having uh, different locations, possibly for senior housing or other fields within the community that people are strong proponents of. It would also increase, um, you know, community usage. So even if there are strong proponents against it um, being within the whole entire town, um, I think narrowing it down to these three areas is really a benefit to our community, and I hope that you will vote yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, uh, online, um, Trevor. Hello, I'm uh, Trevor McDaniel, a resident of Five uh, Sherman Drive, South Deerfield. I'm speaking as a resident and taxpayer tonight. Um, I think we need to move our town forward. Um, the town uh, changes zoning all the time. There's many articles on on this annual town meeting. Last annual town meeting, we changed our our zoning, and I think we need to change our zoning to keep up with the um, the changes in our in our community and the changes we need to bring to our community to keep our community vibrant and and um, and to bring economic development to lower the tax burden on, on the homeowners. Um, there, are, you know, I know there's um, thought that this had only to do with one project. It doesn't. A majority of our project has to do with developing tax base and economic development in our town. We've been working on this Leary lot for a very long time along with many other parcels in town to get, to get some projects going. Um, you know, zoning, 
I beg you to find a hundred foot of frontage anywhere in the downtown area. Our lots are very small. And I, this is a personal opinion. You know, I, I think many years ago, uh, zoning put in large hundred foot, 200 foot areas. I, I, I understand that makes sense in a zoning area, but in a lot of the downtown, a hundred feet is, um, is, is not enough. I mean, you, you just, there, there's, there's hardly any parcels in town that have a hundred foot of frontage. So it was, it was designed to really keep out people who couldn't afford to come to our community. And I think it, we need to move forward and uh, make, make housing affordable and vibrant for uh, our senior citizens and people of low income. And I think it's important to change our zoning to do that. But this is one aspect of that, which would be uh, changing zoning, like Lily said, to, to bring in some senior housing and use up property in town that's just sitting there and to bring economic yeah. development. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trevor. Yep. Um, in town? Uh, yes, and then next time. <laughs> uh, Bruce St. Peter's from Snowberry Circle. Uh, this proposed change is not a grant for the uh, select board or any other board to proceed with any kind of development of this land. This would still have to go through three processes, one being the planning board, uh, possibly the ZBA, uh, and if it makes it through that, then before any development would happen, uh, it would have to be, money would have to be appropriated, it would have to go through town meeting, and you would uh, have a vote at that particular point in time. So it's not an outright grant that it's passed today and start tomorrow. It still has to go through a lot of processes before anything can be done on this property. And that's why this is forward looking and will enhance the town in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. St. Hughes. Um, Linda, since you've already spoken once, I will be talking to other people instead. So there's a South Deerfield resident who to needs to identify themselves. Yes, this is Judith Rathbone, um, resident of South Deerfield, 131 North Main Street. Um, I, I, I'm just really um, amazed that uh, the town voted to turn this down and yet um, under the guise of wanting to assist low-income people and seniors that this is back um, with specific properties identified. I, I, know, I know the Brayburn Road people are uh, unable to see how this could be designed so that it could work. Even if it could, there need to be studies done of the impact of traffic, whether it's for senior housing off, off North Main or Brayburn, um, whether it's huge numbers of people showing up uh, on, on North Main um, Street. And I, I just, I'm, I, I know that, that frontage is developed for safety and I just feel like everyone's throwing all that away completely and nobody cares. Nobody cares about the safety issue. That's the impression I have. People are just have their agendas and they just wanna push their agendas without considering considering safety. You know the residents in our neighborhood are very concerned about the traffic patterns anyway um, because of, of the presence of um, heavy trucks going back and forth all the time. And to think that in addition to those long, heavy, constant trucks and uh, employees driving uh, to work, uh, that in addition to that, that there would be uh, 80 cars coming in on a regular basis is just, it's just not the location. You know, whatever is developed as a so-called park, which is actually soccer fields, should be done downtown. There's space downtown, and it should be done downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, Julie. I feel like I'm coming late in this a little bit because um, I missed town meeting. Um, I agree with what Jennifer said. She's very clear and concise. I cannot be that clear. Um, I do know that for the last five, 10 years, we've been talking about moving all our activity into South Deerfield and protecting our land outside, our open space. 
Um, and this, to me, supports that goal that the town had discussed and voted on and worked for, with a lot of committees putting a lot of time into it. Um, and I'd like us to focus on that goal that we've had for many years, um, and this seems to support um, that goal that we as a town voted on. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, do we have other people on Zoom? Ms. Lindas. Oh, Carolyn. Yes, I, although, look, Carolyn. Thank you. Um, we, the select board, did listen from the town, earlier town meeting. Uh, we did speak with people and, and we heard the concerns of of making it a townwide uh, municipal access. So we did revise our request down uh, from the original townwide uh, to just the center village district with our projects in mind. Um, while we have not had a formal vote, there is consensus on the select board that we would like to use our ARPA money to enhance um, development downtown and develop the Leary lot into parking we're negotiating um, land swap with um, our, the new lumber yard owners to um, have access onto Elm Street. So it's, you drive in off of North Main and drive out on Elm Street. Um, we hope to have that done and capitalize on the activity that would be happening at Treehouse to um, work with our downtown businesses, including Berkshire Brew. Um, we, obviously want to continue, you know, we have a need for recreation uh, fields and athletic fields in town. There's no question. Our kids are bussed out. They're left in Waitley to be picked up. Um, that's not safe. They could, to walk to um, a field is really important, I, I think, from a safety point of view. Um, we also um, want the opportunity, if it occurs, to purchase property along North Main Street to access um, Brayburn property that the town owns behind Brayburn, uh, the two town owned lots there, uh, to develop additional athletic fields. As Lily said, we don't have, we haven't uh, worked out the design, but whatever, we're putting our senior housing um, down behind uh, the town hall. And we might at that point need also a 50 foot access. We intend to develop the fields and um, Leary lot in the next uh, year or two. So this is not something that is uh, not gonna happen. It's for the town benefit. And we believe that the 50 foot um, access is safe um, and is more appropriate for the neighborhoods downtown. Frontier Regional High School, uh, Frontier Regional High School, I just want to read these um, notes. Frontier Regional High School main entrance is 30 feet. The rear entrance is 23 feet. Um, the north, yes. As a, as a conclusion, the select board who is proposing this can have more. Have oh, a okay. I would just want to, yes, I just want to read the distances, the average distances of the streets. So I'm fine. It's more appropriate. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. I, I think now, we're, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Yes. What's your name? I'm Mary Moore. I live on Thayer Street in South Deerfield. Can people hear Ms. Moore? No, probably not. Could you speak up just a little? Mary Moore. I live on Thayer Street in South Deerfield. When I got the postcard the other day, I, I thought if something was voted down as recently as June and it's coming up again this soon, it really sounds to me like somebody somewhere has a very specific agenda they're trying to ram through. And is it true? Somebody said earlier that the zoning, maybe the Zoning Board of Appeals or some other process is already in place if these specific uh, variances were to wanted to happen, people could go through that instead of making a townwide changing the um, changing the zoning frontage law townwide or for these specific places. Is that true that the process is already there? Those are some of the questions. 
And we're not responding right now to questions, oh, okay. but that could be a question that right. we can well, I guess try to address. The point address. is that somebody's got an agenda somewhere that they're Thank trying you. to ram through. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Um, Tim Tilty. Good evening, Tim Hilchey, 30, 330 Greenfield Road. Um, I just wanted to correct a misperception um, that's been mentioned a couple of times during the meeting. Um, at annual town meeting, we were asked to vote on a, on a citywide or townwide ordinance that would have granted uh, a lot of authority to the planning, uh, to the select board and the town to develop town owned properties. But that vote is entirely different than what we're discussing tonight. And also annual town meeting and special town meeting votes require a two thirds majority to pass something. So if we had a 62% vote in favor of, it would be defeat anything that was trying to be moved forward. So I would, I would argue that there wasn't an overwhelming vote against what was proposed before, but there was enough concern among residents that um, they, asked the, they asked the town to come back with something that maybe was a little more specific. So that's my comment. Thank you, Tim. Um, yes. Hi, I'm John Foresti. Um, on Pecum I live on Pocumtuck Drive. For full disclosure, I'm a member in transparency, I'm a member of the Finance Committee and the personnel board, but I'm speaking as a taxpayer and a resident. I have two problems with the article. One is that it's limited to municipal facilities. Is that really fair to Joe Jones that has less than 100 feet and he has to go through various processes to get a waiver that the town does not? I, I, I don't think the town should have extra rights in getting in not even having a gettable. The other thing that bothers me is years ago when the hundred foot frontage was voted in, I don't know how many when that was, but there must have been a reason for it. And I haven't seen anywhere where there's been discussion about whether those reasons should be ignored for lack of a better word or not paid any attention to when we make this when we go down to 50 feet, we're just saying, okay, we don't care what happened years ago. Let's just change it. And I think as somebody said earlier, there is a process to get a waiver. I think the town should go through that process as well. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Um, <clears throat> Zoom, uh, Fran. Uh, well, we have Fran, and then after the next person, Amber. No, Fran have... just had her thumb up, like oh, she, she didn't have her hand raised. Uh, Amber? We are unmuting you, Amber, or you are unmuting yourself? I don't know. Um, Amber, are you interested in speaking? Amber Dupuis, there we go. Thank you. Hello? Amber? Well, my name isn't Amber. I don't know why my daughter's name came up. My name is Gail. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I'm, I agree with the last man that was just talking. Um, I think that the property shouldn't have been put ahead of time. I think you're supposed to do this stuff beforehand and then make a purchase. And it seems like town hall can't or whoever's trying to pass the law change the frontage again. We already voted on it. And it sounds like, looks like someone didn't like the answer that they got through the vote. So let's do it again. Let's, let's get the answer. Let's keep doing it until we get the right vote that we want. It just, it don't seem fair. I don't think that your average person could be doing anything like this. So that's all I got to say. Thank you, uh, Gail. <laughs> um, in person here? Yes. Yeah, Hi, Skip Olmstead, uh, Stillwater Road. 
I was actually going to ask several questions. So let me go ahead and ask the questions, understanding that you're not going to answer the questions. Uh, there are, this is a, a piece of property over here. And if you look at it, North uh, Elm Street, Conway Street, there isn't a lot on there that has 100 feet in front of it. So I guess the question would be, what would happen, there are three houses right across the street here, none of which have 100 feet of frontage. What would happen if, some, if those houses were destroyed? Could the owners rebuild? Okay. Uh, and, then, and then out on Elm Street, I think most of you know the uh, Coldwell Banker lot or the building. Want to guess the frontage? 30 feet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop there. So the question basically is, uh, really concerns itself with pre-existing lots. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So when you say pre-existing lots, like, so you're saying there already are a lot. They were lots before zoning ever. Uh, I'm not clear if you're well, before or but we're not this, actually. We're not really having back to yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll ask those questions again at once. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> uh, Fran? Has Fran spoken before either? I don't know. No. Fran? No, I haven't. Um, I would like to agree with several of the previous speakers who have uh, acknowledged that there is a, a route to be taken for variances and that the town shouldn't be any different than the um, regular residents. Also, I would hate to see this go the same route as our voting on the elementary school so many years ago where it kept coming up and up and up, as someone said, until they got the vote that they wanted and then the, the uh, motion was tabled. So I think, um, as one woman said, there is a, a, an agenda in town and that somebody didn't like what's going on. And I would like to say that many of the townspeople are not too happy with the way things are going either. Thank you. Thank you. For, um, in person? Anyone? Yes. Mr. Patrick. John Patrick, Sr. I live at uh, 50 Sugarloaf Street. I could tell you uh, a lot of the history about the Leary Lot and Elm Street, but that's good for economic development, like Trevor said. At one time, we had a percentage of taxes given by businesses up to 26 to 28 percent. Now we're only collecting less than 20 percent. My thing has always been try to build business in town because business doesn't take that much for services, but yet they receive they pay a lot in taxes. Just paying regular tax rates, they pay a lot of tax. I could talk to you about the lot where they want to put uh, senior housing and recreation. That land was donated. I was back, a selectman back then, and half of it was to be donated to the town for recreation, and the other half was to be for senior housing. What we should be doing is finding a way to get out there. This article gives that way, 50 foot. The same thing up in North Main Street. I want to give you a couple examples of what 50 feet is. You all know Sugarloaf Street. That's built as a state highway. It used to be a state highway, still owned by the state. But the fact of the matter is, if you measure that road, the travel lane is 20 feet and the breakdown lane direction. The travel lane is 12 feet, and the breakdown lane is 8 feet. So that's 20 foot for half of the road. The other half of the road, you got 40 feet. So when somebody says 50 feet is not enough, 
That's just ridiculous. 50 feet is enough to turn around and drive tractor trailers through there without a problem. Thank and you. And guess what? I went through Hardick today, and they've got 400 parking spaces back there. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Troy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Olmstead. Um, anyone online? And I do think, um, since we will be continuing this hearing, um, maybe we'll take just a couple more comments on each side and then whether or not the select board needs to conclude, and then we will be voting to continue the hearing to um, September 30th, if that is in agreement with planning board. So, um, let's see. <laughs> oh, we're back to Zoom. Um, is there anyone other than Linda? Linda was the... Um, had spoken once before, but then, then and then Carolyn. I. Um. Pardon me. Is there someone who's speaking? I don't see. Bob Decker. Yes, looking to get recognized. Okay, Mr. Decker, and then. Yep. Okay. Somebody asked a question. When were the frontages put in? The frontages were put in back in the early 70s, possibly the late 60s, there was a developer from Springfield was going to buy a large farm in the Mill River area. And at the time, you could put six houses on an acre of land. So that's when the, the frontage was set up for, if you had water and sewer, it was 100 feet, it was 100 and a quarter, if you had one or the other, and if you had neither, it was going to be 125 feet of frontage. And the square footages were established at that time. The planning board amended the frontages a little bit in, this, in the residential agricultural district to 200 feet, and they put up more square footage in that area, but still in the center village, it wasn't called a center village then, it was 100 feet and 12,000 square for a single family house. It was 15,000 square uh, for a two family. Okay, so just for a point of clarification. All right. For the clarification. Um, is there anyone else from um, Town Hall? <clears throat> okay. Then, um, with apologies to Linda, since you already did speak, we will have the hearing again on September 30th. Um, select board, if you'd like to. Close, and then we will entertain a motion to continue. Thank you, Annalee. I just um, want to make sure that people are aware the ZBA process requires um, hardship. I do not think the town is um, uh, qualifies for a hardship case. Um, I also wanted just to make sure that we address the frontage adequately. Um, Frontier Regional High School main entrance is 30 feet. The rear entrance uh, that's to the north is 23 feet. North Main Street at Frontier, the actual street, is 35 feet wide. Kelleher Drive is 24.5 feet wide. Captain Lathrop Drive is 22.5 feet. Jackson Road is 27 feet. Pelican's North Entrance is 28 feet. South Entrance is 24 feet. Pleasant Street is 26 feet. Brayburn is our, probably our, one of our tightest streets. That's 19 feet. Conway is 24 feet, Merrigan Way is 24 feet, with the grass and sidewalk is 32 complete. Elm Street at Cumberland's is 30 feet, and the Yankee Candle is 30. Cumberland entrance with grass and sidewalk is 38 feet. The average of the 17 measurements is 28.79 feet. Um, we feel that it is more appropriate than a subdivision road to um, to the neighborhoods. And like I said, we are only able to get 50 feet from the lumber yard should our negotiations be successful for the Leary lot. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, and we, uh, do we feel the signing bill that there's been enough? Okay. Could I make a motion to uh, continue this public hearing on to our meeting on 30th? 
at 7 p.m. has been. I move that we continue this meeting to September 30th. We move this meeting to September 30th uh, at 7 p.m. here in the town offices. Um, will be a hybrid meeting on that date as well. I second it. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. Um, uh, in favor, Anne Mary? Yes, Anne Mary Cleary, yes. Yeah. Or opposed? <laughs> Denise, Denise Mason, yes. Rachel Blaine, yes. Kathy Saldester, yes. Andrea Leeson, yes. And Emily Wolf Cool, yes. yes. So this meeting, it, the public hearing is continued to um, September 30th, 2021, 7 p.m. hybrid. Thank you all very much for your patience, especially with um, our technical difficulties to begin with. Moving right along. Um, yeah, Jen? So I just want you to, to also have um, moved to amend to include the uh, I yeah. district. So I move that we include um, for that meeting the um, um, district include, I'm sorry, that the, the word, wording includes the RD, C1, and the industrial district. Thank you. Second. Second. Um, Denise Mason, yes. Rachel Blaine, yes. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Andrew Leeson, yes. Kathy Kirby, yes. And Lee Wolfkull, yes. So um, the language is amended. Thank you, Jen. So now we will move to our second public hearing of the evening, uh, the Tourism Overlay District. Um, again, we'll have public comments. Uh, select board members who are um, who did propose this uh, bylaw will summarize at the end, and then we'll have a vote on the language to go forward in the warrant. Um, oh, okay. Annalie has a soft, sweet voice. She needs a teacher. I will speak more. I will sit down, be quiet, but you're all being so good that I wouldn't have to do that anyway. I, I will make note that um, we also have had a bit of a um, posting error with the um, with the tourism district also, as most of you may recall, we did vote as a planning board to bring the warrant with the verbiage for the tourism district forward to town meeting, but we didn't realize that we needed to also vote to bring the map forward. So um, that is where, in fact, we have voted to have the public hearing on September 30th, um, initially just to primarily um, address the map. Um, the, since tonight, we are having the public hearing on the, indus on the tourism district, and we will be making a vote uh, with or without a change in language um, for, uh, for moving forward to the warrant. Um, actually, the map that we vote on um, on the 30th will mirror what we discuss tonight. Um, I'll also say as an aside, in response to um, a number of comments from the public as well as different boards and committees, um, there has been the request which the select board has approved, uh, since they're the ones who are bringing this forward, to include the um, Berkshire Brewing Company and the Leary lot. Those are lots 128 and 135. So um, at a at a minimum, that is um, something that we will entertain when we close public comments tonight um, and as we move ahead thinking towards the actual map. Does that make sense? <laughs> is there a possibility, can we put the map up just because, Jen? Thank you. So, uh, Jen, while I unfortunately uh, try to quickly and not too softly read the uh, opening for the public hearing on, on the tourism. Um, we are opening the public hearing pursuant to General Laws 48, Chapter Section 5 on, on September 30th, 13th, 2021, 
on a potential amendment to the Deerfield, Deerfield Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 179, adding a new section, 4950, entitled Tourism Overlay District, to encourage development of inter... Uh, just a second here. <laughs> uh, uh, to encourage development of the entertainment venues within the said new overlay district to enhance tourism while preserving open space, forested areas, and other scenic views. The new section 4950 is anticipated to include subsections entitled as follows. Purpose, overlay district, applicability, uses, site plan review, performance standards for manufacturing, processing, assembly, or fabrication, dimensional requirements, parking and loading requirements, open space requirements, and modification requirements. Full text of the proposed articles are available in our foyer and also online. And as you know, this meeting is in um, hybrid. Uh, so, uh, as you see here, here is the proposed map, which includes Berkshire very lot, as well as the um, other lot that we um, voted to have this public hearing tonight. It includes also the lot across on. Um, no, right here on Elm Street. Elm Street. Elm Street. Elm Street. Yes. It's a barbecue lot where the barbecue is. Sure, what that is. Um, part of the rationale for this overlay district is that it allows more activities without the burden on the businesses um, to obtain temporary permissions or licenses. Um, the lots that have been selected have ample room for parking for large gatherings and would not be a, a burden on the center of town. And it is um, admittedly a small start, but other lots can be added um, after we have experience working with the proposed district. So um, thank you all. I just really was very um, thankful how concise people were with their comments. So keep it up. <laughs> so um, again, we'll go back and forth. Denise with her trusty iPhone here. And <laughs> um, so let's take comments from the um, town hall first, and then we'll move over to um, Zoom. And maybe if we don't need the lot, if we could yeah. see the pictures so we can more carefully see who's mm -hmm. speaking. Thank you. So um, is there anyone in town hall who wishes to address the tourism overlay district? Lily, <laughs> Lily Dwight. I actually have a question. I'm not sure you're answering this, but it's just like, mm -hmm. it's like Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road. Um, I see by the map that was here that that new um, Sunny Days, the new uh, marijuana campus, I guess is what it is, mm -hmm. is included in that. And I'm just wondering, um, how does that affect the process of them moving through development um, over the next year in our town? I just don't understand if it does or doesn't. So I don't know if there's an answer, but I'd appreciate one. Doesn't um, I can answer that, Annalee. Well, we're not having back and forth right now, Carolyn, but maybe okay. at the end. And that's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, is there someone else with a comment on Zoom? Oh, Carolyn. <laughs> I, I was going to wait, but um, I just want to say that Select Board um, was very relieved and pleased that the Channing B property remained on the tax roll, and we wish to support and facilitate and encourage 
any further investment that is happening there and the overlay district was um, is appropriate for their intended activities as we discuss with them. And we're hoping to take the synergy of what's happening there and bring it down and into town for Berkshire Brew. And that was why we, uh, Dave Wolfram wanted to include the area by the barbecue and we added Berkshire Brew itself and um, the, you know, Leary lot. And again, the Leary lot is to relieve parking and stress in the neighborhood of Berkshire Brew and, and use the parking um, there for whatever events do happen. Um, and we, we decided that although we have had no issues with anyone that um, doing the entertainment, uh, temporary entertainment license, it would be, we wanted to see how this would work. So that's why we started small. And just to um, answer Lily's question, that um, that's the overlay district, that's our red light district across the street, that's also the marijuana district, and this is also the tourist overlay district. So it, it really doesn't matter, um, you know, which overlay the persons develop. Thank you, Carol. Uh, yes, Jennifer? Hi, Jen Remillar and Conway Street. Um, so, sorry, feedback. I was sorry. Um, so, in looking at the content, I do have things I'd like the planning board to take under consideration when moving forward. I see that the planning board in here is established as the permitting authority. Um, so, I assume with the site plan reviews. I would assume that the companies or people coming before you as applicants would also have to go through the other proper channels in regards to wetlands and other things like they normally would. Um, it's just that it seems, you know, like you would be the um, special permit granting authority, not the ZBA. So in reducing the process, it's, you know, I think that might enhance more building in that district, um, but I also want you know want to make sure that those who currently are in the process of getting applica applications in front, when this if and when this bylaw passes, that they're still in the process and that you know that it's not overturned, um, because I feel like you know several of the things that have come before um, other committees. Are still under review and still in process for the next, you know, year. Even for example, with Treehouse moving forward. So I'm curious to know if at the September 30th meeting you could answer that question to make sure that those particular matters are, um, you know, still being processed and that they're not grandfathered into this new system. That they still have to follow the old rules because I think um, when decisions were made by other boards that that was something that was you know, looked at that they would have to come in for phase, phase three, for example, for Treehouse, just, you know, throwing that out there because that was something that's in progress. Thank you. Um, so, thank thank you. you. When you thank say you. grandfather, do you mean that, what, what would be grandfather? I probably misspoke with using grandfathered. Okay. I just want to make sure that this new law would not negate the process that issued, you know, the previous um, permit allowed. Thank you. Yeah, um, Southfield Hi, it's Judith Rathbone, 131 North Main. Um, I, I, feel, I feel that, um, again, this came up pretty quickly and suddenly, and I don't feel like I really have enough information to understand um, all the impact of this. Um, it, se it seems like um, it seems like a good idea, anything to promote uh, the downtown, um, to have people coming and to have them uh, be in the appropriate spaces uh, for them. I, I just got to Berkshire Brewing for the first time recently and found it charming and I'm looking forward to Treehouse. I also remember a Zoom meeting for the town where someone said that South Deerfield or Deerfield, I should say, uh, face bankruptcy if Channing Beat had not been sold to Treehouse. 
And that really made me wonder how we could go from a position where we were potentially facing bankruptcy because we had so little um, uh, tax revenue to finding the monies for, um, uh, you know, what I believe is a Ill, Ill thought out hastily uh, chosen idea of putting um, uh, soccer fields in people's backyards. It's been a revelation to know that now the senior housing on Brayburn is going to be athletic fields too. I think that considering the downtown area for public gatherings and, and tourism just makes total sense. Um, I love the idea of the camping and I thought that was that was terrific. I, um, I do have concerns about it being two um, alcohol facilities plus uh, the marijuana facility so nearby. I do have concerns about that, but thank you for uh, allowing me to speak. Thank you. Um, yes, Mr. Olmstead. Before I do that, I just want to make a comment about the fact that town is not in any way, shape, or form. Skip, can you just say, state your name and go closer to the mic so we could hear you at home? Skip Olmstead. A uh, comment was made about bankruptcy. We are nowhere near. It's not something we even considered. So get that out of your mind completely. Uh, there was a piece that in this, we've added a couple of things tonight that weren't there, or at least that I wasn't aware of, Berkshire Brewing, which I think is good. We've got a craft fair up in Old Deerfield next week. Now, we won't pass this in any circumstance. A year from now, are they gonna have a problem running their craft fair, which they've run up there for the last 40, 30, 40 years that I'm aware of. Thank you, Mr. Um, okay, Trevor? Uh, so I, I would like to echo <laughs> Skip's uh, comments that we are quite financially solvent. And um, uh, I think our biggest concern about Treehouse uh, was going to a nonprofit, you know, going from a tax-based pro property into something that was non non-tax-based. But um, we certainly, uh, thanks to the finance committee and others, um, Stuart, our finances very well in town, um, so we're very good. I just wanted to um, mention to Skip, no, the, the craft fair would still go on and do their thing. People can still come and get, you know, uh, permits for for craft fairs and other entertainment things throughout the town like they normally do. This would just allow uh, places to have uh, some by right areas that could could um, promote tourism and economic development throughout throughout the town. And uh, I, as a resident, really look forward to this. And I think it's a great, uh, a great program to start and then evaluate over the next year or so and see how it needs to change, if anything. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in house here. No one, it appears in house. Um, is there anyone else online and otherwise, and if there's any other closing, closing for the select board? And we'll see if the planning board is ready to close the hearing. Is Bob there anyone? Becker, do you want to say something, Bob? Yes, I do. <clears throat> As I said at the uh, zoning hearing a week or so ago, the meeting we had with the, with, uh, the planning board, the question is, I think this is not extensive enough. Basically, the properties that should be included in this district start at the Waitley line and end at Cheapside Bridge. Um, you have property on Route 5 and 10, uh, I believe uh, just north of the uh, Animal Hospital. Uh, I don't believe it's being included in this proposed thing. There's property that goes to Mill Village Road that's not there. There's property on the other side that's not included. You need to include everybody, uh, not just one particular major parcel. I agree it's a nice major parcel and the proposal is probably nice, but you need to take it all the way up Route 5. And you need to go to the center of town, you need to take it and go 500 feet out and around 
in the center of town and make sure all that stuff is included. Because right now you're taking and going up North Street and you're taking in uh, the smokehouse, the property behind it, but the other two or three pieces of property in there aren't included. And nor is the property between Conway Street and uh, Pleasant Street. I think you've got some of the property in there, but north of Pleasant Street, you don't have it. So I need you need to go with a broad brush and do it all if you're going to do it. And be fair to everybody who owns property. Because right now, it's not that necessarily, it's, it sparks us of spot zoning. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else in town hall? Um, Mr. Hilchey? Oh, yes, 10 Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road. Um, I think that the approach of starting small and working to a larger area gives the chance for the town to see whether this is a good idea or not. Um, it's a lot harder to take away rights once you've granted them than, than it is to grant some rights and then look to see if it's wise to expand. And the other thing that I would like to say is it sounds like this is in response to some businesses by the nature of their business uh, would find it difficult to continually come back for special permits for one day events. Some, some events like the craft fair, which only happen once a year, don't really need this, uh, this blanket ability. So um, it sounds like a wise and, and appropriate approach to this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Free for all. Is there anyone, uh, anyone either in town hall or on Zoom who um, would like to comment? Um, then I don't know if the select board, which has proposed this, has any closing comments. Mr. Wolfram? Yeah. The. Um you know, as a select board, we carefully considered a lot of the different avenues. And, you know, one of our primary focuses was to develop the center of South Deerfield into a lot more friendly environment. And by creating these overlay districts and enhancing, you know, some of the things on five and 10, we felt that we could really start improving this, you know, the center of our town. Is right now it's not very attractive and it's not appealing, but uh, with everything that we got going in the works, uh, we're hoping to change that in the near future, and that's why we came up with this overlay, uh, and we, you know, strongly support it. Thank you, thank you. Um, planning board, do you feel that um, we've had enough yeah, opportunity for comments? Up a comment. Uh, so, Andrew, you are, uh, Kathy, you are making a motion to close the public comment. Yes. 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 Um, we have a second to the motion to close the public hearing. A second that. Second by Denise. Um, and all those in favor, Ann Mary? Ann Mary Cloutier, aye. Denise Mason, yes. Rich Blaine, yes. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Andrew Lutzen, yes. Kathy yes. And Lee Wolf Cool, yes. So the public hearing is closed. And now we will have our planning board deliberations. Um, our deliberations will be um, on the wording, on the actual map as well as the wording. Um, we could vote to have the bylaw be less restrictive which in fact would mean including these two additional lots, 128 and 135. We can also vote to have stronger restrictions or have it unchanged. Which are 128 and 135? 128 and 135 are Leary and oh, Berkshire okay. Brewing. I'm not okay. sure which is which. Okay, yeah. yep, yep. So planning board comments. Sure. <laughs> sure. yeah, I'll comment. Yeah, I, I think it's a really good start, and I agree. I think it's better to start small 
and you know as we continue we can we can expand it i think i think i think tim made the comment that it's it's hard to retract it's much easier to expand and i do agree i think it is fair to have berkshire brew there um you know along with the leary lot i think that makes total sense thank you denise <clears throat> other comments on the on the final board well i i will say that i've always been um Heard the conversation, uh, the comments of uh, Mr. Decker that spot zoning is very uncomfortable. Um, you do look like you're, you know, granting a certain. It, it, when you don't see something kind of move through, you wonder why here, why not there. Um, I think that the the select board has thought this through. We we heard a good kind of talk through of it. We put we put a lot of questions to the select board when they offered this plan to us at our last meeting. I felt satisfied. Um, that they had, in fact, thought through, and again, as David said, to make it a more friendly downtown um, in this particular way, in this first step, um, I'm going to kind of move past, I think, my general discomfort with spot zoning, which, which I think is complicated, but I think that we want to keep that very prominent in our thoughts as we move on, because there are other businesses, there are other properties, and they will have value if they are in fact recorded, if they're included in this, um, this zoning overlay. Thank you. Kathy? I agree. Spot zoning tends to favor one entity over another, right? And Kathy, can you talk more into the mic? Sit here, sit here. I gotta move anyway. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can you hear me? So, so my thoughts, yes, spot zoning is, is, is certainly challenging, and I think that spot zoning tends to favor one entity over another. If you look at the map, um, what might be classified or identified as spot zoning, in my opinion, because it's sort of away from the, the overlay, the larger portion of, of what's being outlined, is the Leary Lot in Berkshire. And Berkshire has been there for quite a while. And the Leary Lot is some access for their parking. And it's also central to the South Deerfield proper center, if you will, which everybody benefits from. So I, I think that including that is an important part of building the center for the businesses that are right in the center of our community. We have to draw this in. I, I think it's great that we have this, this sort of outskirted uh, tourism overlay, and I think it's really important, and we have a lot of attractions to that area, but we also have to think about the center of town, and I think the addition of these areas, Leary Lot and Berkshire, and, and this section is sort of critical to that, and I think it benefits the community as opposed to one entity over another. Thank you, Kathy. Sure. Other comments? I see it as a chance to include, you know, this whole um, uh, area of, of potential financial Could growth, you just which is state special. your name for the record. Sorry, I can't see you. Uh, and, um, and I feel like that's something that we could potentially tap into. We have, obviously, as people have mentioned, you know, this uh, craft fair that happens once a year. I think that. There are a lot of opportunities for different types of festivals to happen, um, you know, within the center of town, thanks to these two lots and the spot zoning that um, might be sort of um, seen happening is actually sort of um, encouraging um, equal uh, equity between the two um, breweries, right? Is that also uh, also Yankee Candles included, and there's a brewery, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a big market for festivals. I think that they're, um, once we all open up again. <laughs> other, other comments? Yeah. Um, Emily, I can I make a quick comment? I don't know who you are. This is Dave Wolfram. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> I, I just re want to respond. We're trying to create equity between all three of the breweries in town, not just the two. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good.
good point. Um, all right. So if there are no other comments, I, I will say that I also support this as a good start in hopefully a stronger direction of um, including more places and having more opportunities. I also like the idea that this will perhaps reduce some of the special permit burden on um, some of the businesses um, so that they don't have to keep coming back to us as well as it's a burden to them. Um, so um, perhaps I, I wasn't hearing that there were other potential changes to the verbiage other than including lots 128 and 135. Is that correct? <laughs> So I would entertain a motion initially to change the bylaw article to include lot 128 and 135, which also does. I move that we include lots 135 and one. The other 128. 128 in the um, in the map that will accompany the overlay. Amendment. Thank you. Yeah. That was Rachel. Can I have a second? I second that. <clears throat> so, um, all those in favor? Ann Mary? Ann Mary Clutier, aye. Nathan, aye. Rachel Blaine, aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Andrew Lucian, aye. Kathy Petrova, aye. And Emily Wolfful, aye. So, the new wording has been um, accepted. Now, if we could have a motion to send this um, to the town warrant with this additional wording. So I'll make a motion that we send the tourism overlay district with the new wording to the town warrant. And the map. Thank you. And the map. Right. Yeah. Second. Thank you. Second by Andrea. Any discussion? Any other discussion? Sorry, I was forgetting about discussion. <clears throat> um, you were having a lot of discussion tonight, anyway. <laughs> and Mary. We're discussing. All those in favor or against? Mary, Mary. include your eyes. Smith and I. Oh, Rachel and I. Kathy Sylvester, I. Andrew Lipson, I. And Annalie Wolfel, I. So we will move this forward to the town meeting warrant. <clears throat> right, correct. So our last. Um, public hearing is on our solar energy systems. Um, oh, and I get to read the statement again. I, here we go. Um, we are having our public hearing pursuant to GL Chapter 40A, Section 5 on Potential amendment to the Deerfield Zoning Bylaws by replacing Chapter 179, Section 3800, Solar Energy, in its entirety, <clears throat> entitling the section Solar Energy Systems, the purpose of which is to facilitate expansion of solar energy systems. This section is anticipated to include purpose, definitions, general requirements, site plan review, conditions, special permit, dimensional requirements, tables of dimensional requirements for medium and large-scale ground-mounted solar energy systems, table of dimensional requirements for small-scale ground-mounted solar energy systems, table of dimensional requirements for roof-mounted solar energy systems, design and performance standards, safety and environmental standards, monitoring, maintenance, and reporting, abandonment or decommissioning, and amendments to the 20, Section 2230 Use Regulation Note. Full text of these articles, again, are in the foyer and also um, on the town website. Um, as many people remember, <laughs> these bylaws um, that were passed in June were primarily for medium and large scale solar, and there was a strong request that uh, small scale solar bylaws be addressed. ASAP, and that's what the, the uh, planning board has done. The main changes in these solar bylaws are primarily clarifications, definitions, and some correlations with other parts of the, um, of the zoning bylaws. 
Um, I will make note that there have been numerous editions of this solar bylaw. The one that is on the website now is, in fact, the most recent edition. And so if you're working from another warrant or another edition, I'll tell you if, in fact, the newer edition addresses the concerns that you have. Um, so, again, um, uh, we've got comments going back and forth between town and Zoom. Um, the changes in the small scale, um, especially, um, do have to do with, well, the changes in the bylaw, as I said, clarifications. So, for example, um, we really wanted to clarify where there were, um, where the bylaws applied just to medium and large scale rather than to all of the solar installations where they applied just to ground mounted or ground mounted and roof mounted. Um, the uh, definition, we also did include some dimensional use tables that we felt were more, um, e were easier for the public to understand as they were considering solar installations. Um, the definitions in particular, there has been, the, there's been, um, we are, are defining uh, the maximum size for small scale solar installations. Um, and then also in terms of correlation with other parts of our zoning bylaws, that's where we have put in these new use regulation tables and the dimensional use tables that um, will then take precedence over the, um, the tables that are there now. And we made some zone, um, footnote clarifications and um, definition clarifications. So, um, do we have on uh, in town? Is there a um, in town hall? Is there are there any comments on solar, Mr. St. Peters? Well, since you're only going to allow me two minutes, I'm going this the other way around. <laughs> Unfortunately, I ran out of copy paper, so I only got four copies. So, uh, to every other one. Here. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. And Thank hopefully, you. Thank you. Time to read them over. Uh, there is one mention. Oh, Bruce St. Peter's uh, 19 Snowberry Circle. Uh, there is one mention that is not on there. Uh, just a typo, uh, section 3893. Select board is written as two words. I believe uh, your submittal to the town is one word, as well as that was approved uh, at the town meeting. But that's just a typo. Uh, the rest of it, I hope, is pretty much uh, self-explanatory, and if you have any questions, I would be glad to answer, and I know you're not doing answers, but at some future point or whether you uh, would like to uh, contact me. Um, there is one other thing. There's another one about uh, uh, Section 3842, Section B1. Um, I'm not sure to whether that wording should be from or of. It seems it would be more important to make sure other properties and structures were not shaded rather than what is shading the uh, applicant's uh, solar system. Um, 3837, uh, delete utility scale and replace with medium and large scale. Utility scale has been eliminated totally out of the bylaw, the revised bylaw, and you may want to do that. I'm just kind of going over some of the things, very little uh, thing. Um, 3832 up towards the top. Uh, I'd suggest possibly including wording for uh, expiration or abandonment on uh, solar systems, on small, even small systems, because you are including um, uh, small systems that would apply to commercial establishments. Uh, so, and two years is more than ample time to be uh, suggested is uh, insert would be a permit issued pursuant to this bylaw shall expire if the solar energy system is not installed and functioning within 24 months from the date the permit is issued. Uh, it's a small system. Uh, the building inspector or any other permit holders shouldn't have to hold on to a permit forever. <laughs> Thank uh, you. 
Thank you. Um, so, Thank you. Bruce, well, the things that you're talking about, the abandonment, changing the utility scale, can you just... Uh, okay. Uh, I'm no. sorry. What was that? Set back, you guys. Set back, you I'm trying to go fast so you don't shut me off. No, no, no. You're already well, I want to know what your main <laughs> points are because uh, we've been looking at this for a long time. What are your main yeah. points? What's that? What are your main what are your main concerns? Uh dimensional requirements, uh heights as well. Okay. And if anybody has ever looked at the house up on Solar Avenue in Montague, uh that would be a great oh. reference point as to somehow Changing that right from the third, from the height to something in relative to the roof line, so it doesn't stick up like a right. sore thumb. Another one is the uh, front and side uh, uh, eliminating systems in front yard. A good example would be uh, the one down in Mitchkowski Circle in Waitley, standing right up in the corner that you drive right in, and there you are. Yeah. Um, you know it's. It's only very few, Thank but that's what rules are written for okay. is a minority to protect the majority. Okay. So hopefully you'll take the time to review it and before you get Thank it you. up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, South Deerfield residents. Yes, thank you. Judith Rathbone, 131 North Main again. Um, I think my um, public hearing comment is more about process at this point. Um, I really don't get what's going on. I don't understand why it's designated. And by the way, I'm not looking for an answer because I understand from what the rules were that no answers were supposed to be given and no responses were supposed to be made to comments. Um, it's, a, it's stifling to have that happen. But I don't understand this back and forth between the town and uh, the public, I don't understand if it's because you guys think that there's not enough public commentary from uh, people. I don't understand if it's because everybody who represents the town and is elected or hired by the town also considers themselves a resident and so can dominate the airwaves by participating sort of twice. So my question is really about process. I don't understand why people were allowed to speak multiple times. Some were and others weren't. And I don't understand why some people were given more airtime and others weren't. So to come, my questions, my comments are really about that process. And let me come back to the solar panels. Again, where is the time to truly consider this? It feels like everything was done totally last minute, these constant changes. Obviously people make mistakes and do foolish things. And I don't have any sense of definitiveness about this. That concerns me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, Jen. Jen Revelard, Conway Street. Um, so I just wanna say, that if you're curious to know what's going on in the community, attend planning board meetings, look online, educate yourself by asking questions on a regular basis. Um, while this is new to me, I've been following since the previous town meeting. And I strongly support this clarification with the small solar because I think it's really a necessary thing. I'd also like to support Mr. Um, St. Peter's concerns with the height of the uh, solar panels. I think, um, you know, maintaining our quaintness, if you want to refer to it as that, for style within the community is really important. I think people are really uh, curious to make sure, you know, other surrounding communities that what we, see, what we don't like in regards to solar um, really is implemented here. Um, and I think and really great at posting things online. And I really appreciate that because when I have questions about what's going on, I can read there. And I, you know, I really strongly support that. Um, and I think Mr. St. Peter brought up a lot of great points um, with, his, with his talk. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on Zoom. <laughs> Uh, 
we'll have back to this anybody. Do you have any other comments at all then? Um, between Zoom and in house? No. All right, then planning uh, board. We do have one. one. David Keith has his hand raised. Uh, okay. You sir. Uh, whoever that is. David hello, Keith. can you hear me? Hello, hello. Oh, David. Hi. Can you hear my, yeah. hear my dog in the background now? Uh, yes. All right. Uh, this is David Gilbert Keith. I'm on the Energy Committee, and I, I applaud. I, I'm a little surprised about the question about process. Um, maybe it's not process, but I know that you have been very deliberate about this and deliberative, and I appreciate that. I wanted to say so. Um, if if there's amending happening still, I would be in favor of the larger, smaller, small um, arrays because some businesses could draw more power. Um, but I would think that 660 is fine, but 1700 might be more appropriate for longer term. And otherwise, I just applaud all the work you have put in on this. And, would like to emphasize that part of the rush is that there is a gold rush happening in solar power. And, and a lot of people are, a lot of big businesses are trying to get their foot in the door and it would be, it behooves the town to have things in place ahead of those requests from big corporations and so on. So thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Key. I'm going to make a clarification. Denise? Yeah, I just want to make a clarification, just so no one's confused. The 660 is for ground mounted for residential. Okay, you can still put roof mounted, so you can do a combination. And if, we're, if it were to exceed 660, you couldn't do it on the roof. You'd have to come for a site plan review. That wasn't loud enough? Okay, <laughs> do you want me to repeat that? Okay. <laughs> okay. No, just just the clarification. The 660 is for ground mounted for residential. You can still put roof mounted. If you want more than that, then you just have to have a site plan review. But you can have that. So just want just want to make sure that you realize that. Okay. Was that loud enough? Um, <laughs> it, I'm trying harder next. Time. It appears that there's um, another comment on Zoom, uh, <laughs> four one three three five one, etc. Or is that not? No, that's our phone. Okay. There you go. Okay. So, um, planning board, um, can I entertain a motion to close the public hearing? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I make a motion to close the public hearing on solar. Denise. I second it, Kathy. Kathy Sylvester. Yeah. Any further discussion? Um, I have one question. Yes. yes. I got okay. one more thing. One of the things that Bruce brings up before we close is uh, um, canopy. And that is, a, we uh, have that as allowed. And I think it should come under site plan review. Oh, okay. why is that? I think it's March. I think it's going to end up being. It, it, the, what we're trying to do is create an opportunity for people to do it. I don't know. So I want to just. I'm looking for a little more clarification on on your concern about the canopy, like a canopy park. Yeah, Mine. Sure, certainly. I just. I need it. I need clarification there. Well. I'm just concerned with these canopies uh, maybe starting up the way the bylaw is written right now. An individual could put a canopy, uh, solar canopy, over his driveway in the front yard and uh, in lieu of a um, auto shed or whatever. And I, I mean, I, don't, I just don't think they're conducive to the uh, uh, interior residential district and town. Uh, you keep hearing, well, we want to keep the quaintness of the town and everything else. Well, I don't think solar 
uh, arrays on poles or any other structure in front yards and in driveways uh, is going to be conducive to keeping that character. And that's why my suggestion was that uh, they be uh, not allowed in uh, RA and CVRD. And possibly if you wanted uh, C1, because there's a lot of C1 areas that are abut the CVR. Thank Do you. you have any bylaws about carport? Yeah. Uh, carport? Yeah. Carport. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. The carport seems to me to be a very perfect place to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And we, what do we care what it's made out of? Right. This might be part so of our deliberation too. Solar too, canopy, like it's like a car park that's a solar installation. So it's not separate from somebody's. Is it separate from somebody's? Do they put up a solar canopy and then also? Well, do we this, have any rules? Excuse me, about for just a moment. This would be this part of our um, our deliberations yes. about the, yes. okay. Uh, okay. the actual yep. bylaw. Right now, we're just um, considering whether or not to close the public hearing. Oh, yes. I see. Got it. Yep. 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 And then, if we could yeah, speak one at a time yep. and um, be recognized through the Sorry. chair. Thank you. So, um, I already made a motion to close the public yes. hearing. And we just someone voted on that. And she did. Okay. <laughs> So, so uh, and Mary? That would be included here, yeah. I'm done. Denise Mason, yes. Yeah. Rachel Blaine, yes. Kathy yeah. Sylvester, yes. Andrew Lipson, yes. Yeah. Annalie Wolfcool, yes. Yeah. So, the public hearing is closed. Um, so, now um, we will. Um, discuss. I suppose um, how, we sh how we should start is with the, well, we have to have a motion and then we have discussion, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So um, a motion to, um, well, someone make a motion. It sounds like it's either to have the bylaws as they are right now, then there are some questions about canopies, there's questions mm -hmm. about size, I believe. Those seem to be the primary Questions, if I'm correct. So, so Annalie, if if there's um, if there's an issue with the canopy, can we put that we we would not allow any canopy in the residential, but it could be put on an existing on a carport. But, but if it were a new new um, construction, it could be you know someone built a new carport with solar. Yeah, can you speak, speak loud? Um, I don't know why you'd, it would have to be a new, uh, only existing structures. I think if okay. you can build a new carport so with carport. Uh, solar on top, it would solve two issues. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about, Denise, also is sort of folded with two issues. One is the residential zoning, mm -hmm. and one is small scale, because small scale could also be business, not just residential. Right. right. True. Yes. Kathy? So... My concern is that, uh, you know, are we cherry picking what you can put in your front yard? Because do we have any rules that you can't put a big, huge shed in your front yard as long as it meets the setback? You know, I don't want to get into saying you can have this, but you can't have that because I may not want someone to build a huge shed in their front yard because it blocks my view of whatever. But I'm not sure I have the right to say that. And so are we doing that with solar canopies or solar arrays in the front yard? I mean, I get it, you know, might not like looking at it, but there's a lot of things I might not like looking at, and I'm not sure we can prevent that. Thank you. You know, that's somebody's yard. Kathy? <clears throat> Thank you. I believe the term quaint, right? Like louder. The earth is burning, drowning, drying up. You know, I mean, and so there are people who are really trying to do their best to, if everybody does something, you know, collectively we all make change, right? And I think we have to be careful about what one person determines as quaint and one determines as an eyesore, right? And how we look at, like Kathy says, you know, if it might be something that's beautiful to one person and maybe not so beautiful to the neighbor. And also, what is the size of the property? Where is it, you know, how far is it away? How close are you abutting your neighbor's edge? One problem that I've had. Yes, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> one problem 
that I've had wrapping my mind around is you could build a much bigger fence yeah. than we've allowed for, you know, to build a solar array. And, you know, your neighbor can build whatever kind of fence they need to. And so it's a much smaller, potentially bothersome thing that your neighbor is doing. And so <clears throat> I guess I'm having a hard time wrapping your, my head around you can build whatever kind of fence and paint it whatever color you want, but if it's a solar array, then it's something different. Um, so, Kathy, yeah? So, the is what's the height? Uh, what we have in ours right now, I believe, is um, 39 feet. And canopies are defined in the solar world as different from ground mounted systems. Um, and in general, they are off, I mean, very often seen as uh, pergolas or car parking areas. Want to um, mull on that? And there was the question of 660 versus 1700 as a maximum um, size. I'll make note that the 660, it's a little confusing from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, 660 on one hand is the uh, Department of Public Utilities net metering maximum for residential allowance, which is 10 kilowatt hours, translates to 660. Um, but then also, um, and, it's, and 660 is, is less than half the size of a tennis court. So just for putting your arms around that. 1700, which is another number that's been put forward, is derived from the, also Massachusetts, definition for small or residential solar installations under their SMART incentive program, which is the incentive for people to put in um, in solar. And 1,700 square feet is approximately 42 by 42. So you can think of how that fits into a football field or it's more than half of a tennis court, a tennis court being... Uh, 36 by 78. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Pretty good. <laughs> So 42 by 42 versus 30, yeah, right. Okay. So 660 versus 1700. Andrea? Isn't the 660 just the ground mounted part? Correct, and for so small if scale. If people wanted to make larger installations, they could by using their roofs. If their roofs are applicable for the okay. solar, and as Denise mentioned earlier, if they want it larger, their roof doesn't work, they can, then they do bump into the medium and they yeah, would have site wow. plan review. Right. So 665 right for anybody? Correct. For ground mounted. For ground mounted, ground anybody, ground. business or residential. Just, yes, Denise? You know, you know, I mean, as I look at this 660, I mean, we've discussed this numerous times. Okay. And, you know, if you're in town, I get it. I mean, 660 is probably, I don't know whether I would want more than that. If you're if you're out way out in the country someplace in Deerfield where you don't have any neighbors, I can understand how people would want more. And that's fine. They just have to come for a site plan review. So, you know, you've got to think about the entire town, not just one, you know, one element. Thank you. Yes, Kathy? Well, I, I still think we went a far way from 10,000 to 2,100 to 660. Personally, I mean, in a in town, you still have setback requirements, and again, are you limited to what you can put within those setbacks on anything else on your property? I don't, you know, I don't. I'm asking the question because if you're not then why this? You know, I have a roof-mounted system, and it doesn't cover all of our needs, and it probably is, it's almost 10 kilowatts. And with electric cars coming and electric heat, because we've got to get off fossil fuels, 
some people can't put it on their roof. I have friends that can't do it because they don't have sh they have too much shade. Um, but they have a field where they could put a larger system. So, you know, I personally think that it's, it should be larger. I, I agree with David Keith, actually. I think we should have stayed with our 2100 or 1700 and not gone down to 660. I think that was way too restrictive. And we shouldn't be restricting people's yards with one thing and not another. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, and Mary? I just want to reiterate that it's really watered down from 10,000 feet to 660. You know, that's the intention of it. And I think that we're weighing people's, you know, sight lines, you know, with scientific facts, what's going on in our world right now, and what are we going to prioritize. Okay. Uh, yes, Rachel. So I don't disagree with the impact of fossil fuels and the importance of us to move forward with this. And that is part of the reason we're pushing on this. I, all, I do feel, however, um, so if somebody is going to put the $30,000 into this, the extra $300, $350 to come before us for a site plan review is not um, so onerous that it isn't, and it will preserve those neighbors uh, the neighborly feeling, the understanding, like that I'm not just blocking it somewhere, a larger array uh, where it is really complicating somebody else's view, whatever, changing the neighborhood because of the size. So I, I guess I'm I'm in favor of the more modest size. I think, and I'm, I will just say too that my experience sitting here is that people are not used to looking at. This. And I agree with you, it is going to get easier for us. We are going to look at them down the road and say, oh, there's a nice little, cute little, quaint little solar array. <laughs> but until we see those solar arrays that way, I think that's really hard on your neighbors to see it as. as so I, I'm, I'm for the 660. Um, I think it gives us a little bit um, of play not to discourage mm -hmm. more building of it, but... Um, it is. It's an expensive endeavor. Can I no ask, one's going to throw those up. Can I ask you a yes, yes, yes. yes. You know, obviously, you've been on the planning board a long yeah. time, and I haven't. So, so if I wanted to build anything in my yard, would I have to come for a site plan review, or would it only be for the solar array? Yeah. Okay. If you wanted to build a shed that's that's covered, you'd have to have the building inspector come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you do for your solar panels, do you not? Um, you have to have a building. Yeah, permit. Permit. There. You do have to have permit, a building permit, but not right. Are you there? <laughs> Permits but are different from south site plan yeah. review. You want to make sure that it, that the building has enough structural integrity to hold the panels. They the do The roof, that. it's not. They, they do that. Do that. Yeah. They do do that because yeah. I've been through it. Yeah. Um, Off, you want to see us? Yeah, all the solar panels and solar installations are permitted. Um, the comment on limiting in the yard, I mean, there's a lot coverage, but that's about it for limiting what people can do on their yard, is exceeding the allowable lot coverage. There's no specific thing that's limited. Yeah. Does that help? So permits up. It does. Yeah. And that's you. current. That's current. So we're actually changing that, Bob. You'll still need a building permit. An electrical permit. Right, but we're an electrical permit. You're not changing that at all. You can't change building code. No, but we're actually changing the limitations of the lot permit. I mean, we're we're now we're saying it's 660, or or you have to go to the. Yeah, but it, to address the other person's comment about whether we're limiting any other structures on the property, no, it's only lot coverage yeah. limiting the structure. So if you want to build a garage or a barn, you can. And not a carport? You can How build a carport. a carport. Yes, you can build a carport. I'd let you build a canopy too, unless this restricts it. And just want to clarify that what it says in, in here is that um, on the purposes of this bylaw, solar cal canopies are considered ground mounted solar energy systems. Uh, no, Jennifer, that was an earlier version. That is not part of the updated version. That version. Sorry. 
That's because, um, in fact, uh, for solar, canopies are not considered ground-mounted. Right. They have their own definition. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, it, um, it's a structure. A, a, a canopy is a structure. You could put a canopy up and park your car under with no solar panels on it. It's still a structure. Mm -hmm. Right. And on the one hand, it looks like a solar panel. On the other hand, it's like roof-mounted solar. So exactly. It's, it's, I'm, I'm <laughs> That's a interesting, story. interesting, yes. Yeah. Comment, and you folks have an understanding just looking at what 660 square feet looks like? Yeah, yep. yes. It's mm -hmm. a garage, typical garage, 24 by 24. We can't hear you. You need to go to the mic and state your name, please. <laughs> mentioned that, uh, yeah, it's approximately 25 <laughs> Car garage is two, Not is a small one car garage. Right, right. Okay. All right. Um, well, it seems like these seem to be the two issues. Is that correct as we're talking size. here? Size and canopies. I'm not. I'm not as concerned about canopies. Well, sorry, I so asked maybe, that question. <laughs> I'm taking that off. The, um, actually, I'm more concerned about decommissioning. But I think we're going to hold on to that because I think that that's one down the road. I think we need to look at that more. I think that's a very good point. Um, I think that somebody has a decommissioned solar panel, and maybe that's something we want to look at. But I, I'd have to think about that more, and I think that's a, that's some. Kathy, well, we talk a lot about you know I can build this, but I can't do the solar. But I think it comes back to the decommissioning of those solar panels, right? Thing. And and having an understanding who has them and the time frame of them, when were they installed? And what is the light of them? And then how do we dispose of it? There's going to be an exodus of the solar panel because they're all coming in at a relatively significant time frame. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the decommissioning, I think, is really going to be another big, huge. Right. We'll see that. Which down we're the road. thinking is I mean, no, yeah, we potentially. That can, but that's um, so let's take these two issues separately. There's the canopy and there's the size, and let's maybe begin with canopy first. And I'm not quite sure um, what the um, what the motion would be if there's someone who wants to make a motion about changing or not changing the canopy Annalie, definition. I have yes, and Mary. So this is the suggestion that Bruce. Mm -hmm. This is the suggestion that Bruce St. Peter made, and I think if everybody looks at it, I'm not sure what it indicates, but I think it indicates that right now it, there's a yes, but Bruce feels <laughs> that there should be a no, right. just Good. so we all know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. we have okay. actually, we've been we put this one out there and back yeah. and forth enough times, um, and he also brings up the height. Yeah, and Jennifer's um, echoed the same. He, um, you know, uh, one is an RA, so there you we go. There's your neighbors, whether they live really close by or really far away, or mm -hmm. panels are way far away or they're close by. I think that's tricky. And then in CRVD, CDRD. Sorry. <laughs> the, um, a bit. Yeah, four thank you. Four um, and again, I think. So I. I think it's a good well, thing. So. Sorry, Andrea? Sorry. Or Kathy? I'm, yes, it is. Sorry, it it is yes. So it's 35 feet or from the ground to the roof. roof. So you're not talking 35 feet right. more. Oh, ground no, mountain. No, no, no. no. Yeah, so, no. so and I'm not sure if I have a concept of how tall it is. 35 feet is approximately two, well, is it two? Three, well, a story is about 14 feet. Mm -hmm. So it's two and a half stories. Three and a half stories. Yeah. Okay. okay. That was 35. Yeah. 37 is two feet more. Right. And may I ask, how did we come to these numbers? Um, these were numbers that um, we've seen both in other bylaws as well as in um, what. Uh, solar companies are are installing, so kind of industry stand. So <clears throat> with <laughs> there's a little bit more to this than just canopies. Well, wait a second. This is 
this is just the roof mounted. So this is yeah, different. Sure. This is different. Right. right. So back to the canopy piece of um, does someone want to present a motion that has to do potentially with the by right or or not by right for RA and CVRD districts for solar canopies and what else would be the questions that I mean that's a little different from what we've been discussing. Yeah. No, I'm not okay yeah. with it. Okay. I'm okay. I make a motion that um, solar canopies are a by right use in the RA and CVRD. Right, which they are. Which they are. So they they are. are not changing anything, yeah. right? So you're making a motion not to change yeah, exactly. the I canopy. Don't think you have to do that. Yeah. Can I have a second on that? Okay. If it's, if it's, I don't think it's that. We've got to change anything. So yeah, I don't think it's anything. So it's nothing to it. My bad. Well, unless there's. <laughs> There's no more discussion that we want, but I'm seeing shaking, no shaking heads. Okay. So are we settled with our discussion about canopy? Um, so then um, with the definition of 660 versus 1700, both of which seem to have some level of industry standard to them, um, could I have a motion um, about the maximum definition for small scale solar ground mounted ground mounted no yeah correct ground mounted small scale solar correct it's either to keep it unchanged at 660 or to um, increase it to 1700 i believe. i'd like to move to increase it to 1700 i second it is there further discussion did we talk to Chris about this? Yes. And that's less restrictive. Yeah. Yes, and it's and, and town council has said that it's less restrictive. So seconded it. Counts. Uh Andrea. Andrea? No. Yeah, I did. Um yes, and town council has said that it that if we were to increase it, it is less restrictive. Yeah. Can you say that one more time? Who so Ann Mary made the motion. And Kathy Sylvester seconded it. Kathy, okay. Okay. Um, is, is there more discussion? So the motion is to increase it to 17. Is that correct? She made the motion. Yes. All right. Um, so if there's no more discussion, um, Ann Mary? Amory, clue your eye. Denise? Denise Mason, no. Rachel Blaine, no. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Andrew Lucian, no. Uh, Kathy, All right, so what was that? How many did we have? Was somebody four. counting? Four, three. Four, three for what? Four, three, four, no. To not increase it to 1700. All right. Okay. So then. No. no. I couldn't hear it either. It was not in. Did you mean yeah. the music was distracting? <laughs> it was. Voted what? Is what I'm voted 4 3 to not increase it to 1700. To leave it at 660. To leave it at 660. Yes. Um, so. Um, then um, can I have a motion to bring the solar bylaws as um, stated in the September 2nd, 2021 version that is posted on the website forward to the warrant? I make a motion to bring the solar bylaw as stated in the, what was that, to the warrant. September 2nd. September 2nd to the warrant. A second that. Uh, any more discussion? You seconded that? Andrea. Andrea. Thank you. Andrea. That's not Andrea. That's not Kathy. That's Andrea. <laughs> uh, and Mary? Hey, Mary, clear your no. Uh, Denise? Yes. Rachel Lane, yes. Kathy Sylvester, no. Andrea Lee, yes. Okay, I gotta ask this question. Sorry. 
So we're bringing it to the town. Yeah. 660 by right, that's our maximum allowable ground yeah. mounted. And then permit for beyond that. Correct. And Emily will pull yes. So we will bring it forward to the warrant. All right. We have, I believe, um, one more item of business. Unfortunately, we are a little bit sorry. over. <laughs> no, um, no, you, I'm sorry about, but the aunt, people behind you have business here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. And this I'm is, sure it's um, for this you, though. is uh, I'm losing. <laughs> you still want to lift it? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, smart people. It's a democratic party. An ANR, um, which is now under uh, other, we don't have any other new business, um, business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior. Um, there is an ANR. Um, could you introduce yourselves and describe the project? Uh, Josh LeMay, South Mill River Road. And Catherine LeMay, South Mill River Road. Uh, the project is a subdivision of 18 Stockbridge Road. So for purposes yet to find, primarily to maintain an agriculture at this point, but it's, uh, I'm the applicant on behalf of the landowners who are family members of mine. Ah, that's what, that's the name. So there, you're a family member. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Deerfield. <laughs> um, do we have any so with an ANR, we can endorse the um, ANR or choose not to. Um, as the planning board saw, um, we did request comments from other boards mm -hmm. and officials. And um, other than um, one comment from our um, building, what is his title now? Get commissioner. Is that that's Bob? Building commissioner. Commissioner. That's building commissioner. Um, my understanding also is that the comments that were raised by the building commissioner um, are either have been taken care of or are in the process of being taken care of. That's correct. Correct. I believe it's been approved. The uh, alterations. Okay. Thank you. Oh well, it's good. Well, we've got the map. Thank you. So the comments were that the perk test should be. Can be, yeah, separated. That you should do well each. No? It was so the, the septic for 18 Stockbridge Road, because of access issues, needs to be on the subdivision. So there needed to be a designated easement for maintenance and repair of the septic, which was surveyed out. That was the alteration we made that wasn't originally on the plan. So you can see, like surrounding that septic, it's, those are the new survey lines. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I also did talk with. Bob Walden, who also oh. talked with the applicants as well as the building commissioner, and um, feels you? that they're. Oh, oh Bob, excellent. Yeah, yourself. well, you're you're mixed. It's the Board of Health, um, not that oh. had the comment, yeah. and I talked. Yeah, and they have settled the issue by creating the easement. Um, so, in my opinion, as the building commissioner, it's a buildable lot as a zoning officer. And it's fine with the um, Board of Health, who will put it in writing if you need it. But but it's all set. I think that might be nice, Bob, just to kind of clarify on this one, just because it, you did take the extra step. Yeah, it was. It may already be in writing, but I was the only one there today, and I couldn't locate it. And I talked to Richard, and he will either rewrite another letter or locate the letter. It has been settled, though, and it, and. Uh, and that's the that's the way it went. Yeah. Thanks for sticking it out tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, no problem. <laughs> fun, fun and games. Um, all right. Um, also, one of the thing, one of the uh, statements in the A and R application does mention that if we do endorse the um, application, it is not an, a determination that the lots are buildable lots. So I believe our motion would be to perhaps potentially someone could make a motion to endorse the A&R application with recognition that this endorsement is not a determination that the lots designated are buildable lots. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lita? Hi, I, I have a question. I live on South Mill River Road, so I, I know the property. Is, is, is the permit for the building commissioner for the building commissioner to approve the ANR or is it just the building commissioner? Is it just the building commissioner? 
because I'm not sure how far down that road that town maintains. Yeah, there's an existing farm road that's that accesses the uh, field up there. To the north. North. Yeah, so it goes it goes north from it's not on surveyed on this, but it's oh. been the, the road that's been in use for the history of the farm. So it is maintained all the way to the um, Lincoln Avenue Station. Yeah, it's 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 so I move that we endorse this plan um, with the understanding that it is not a determination um, that the lots are necessarily buildable. Thank you. Um, that was by Rachel. Rachel Can I have a second? Okay. Andrea seconded. Andrea seconded. Uh, any further discussion? <laughs> so, Anne Mary Cloutier. Anne Mary Cloutier, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Rachel Blaine, aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Andrew Lipson, aye. Kathy Matilda, aye. And Lee Wolfkul, aye. So thank you, <laughs> thank you for staying. So, do you have anything to sign? Uh, yes, and actually, um, well, as we leave. Jen's had her hand in hand. Uh, Jen, is the, the plans out Bob. there that we can sign? Bob, I'm just asking before he disappears. Are you still there? Uh -oh. Bob? I think he disappeared. So, we'll come back in and sign him. And I will, I'll look and see if it's in the office on the desk. Town Hall will let us know when the documents are here to sign. We can't do the DocuSign on right. an A&R. Yeah, if these go to the... the it uh, has the mylar that we have to sign. So, um, any other public... Next on our agenda is um, any public... Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Come back again. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for being so accommodating, everybody. That's my public comment. I appreciate it. Um, you've been wonderful to work with. We're going to get out of here by now. Thank you. Any other, uh, any other public comments? Thank you, Carol. Um, and I don't know. If, I don't know that there've been any committees or reports and seminars or whatnot. <laughs> we have another swing at that on the thirtieth. Yeah, we do. We may do. I, may I report on one little thing? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I have been. Uh, I have submitted an app. I've submitted an app. Are so uh, show, show of interest in uh, becoming a member of the Open Space Committee to uh, Dan Graves. I am waiting to hear from him. Thank you. I'm in charge of that. Yeah. I move that we adjourn. Oh, <laughs> yes. And our next meeting will be hybrid, remote, hybrid on September 30th, 7 p.m. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Oh, Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 boom. All right. Thank you all. Walk out.